yeah, this is your this is your first rad fest, so it's going to be an experience for you. And I know you're doing some really uh, great work. Some of the uh, progress you're making around age reversal and anti aging. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the key things you're doing right now that you're going to bring to RadFest? Well, let's try to put it as simple as possible. We yes. are trying to bring the concepts of the theory of relativity of Einstein, more than 100 years old, and the concepts of quantum physics to the realm of biology and the so-called quantum medicine. Why? Because we know by Einstein's theory that time is not a fixed, time can be dilated or can be shortened. And of course, if we dilate time, we have more time. Our cells, our DNA has more time to repair damage that accumulates with aging. So we can even aim at reverse aging, reversing aging, because if we give cells time enough to repair mutations or damages to the epigenome, then uh, aging can be slowed down or even reversed. And the concepts of a quantum biology, again, are applications of something that is familiar for physics for the past 100 years or so. The so-called quantum entanglement, everything is connected. Well, until recently, these concepts uh, uh, were applied only to small particles like photons or electrons. Now we know that also cells within our body communicate to, through quantum interactions and not only cells but even individuals are somehow connected through this rather mysterious phenomenon that is called quantum entanglement. We have been able so to speak to break the code and to devise strategies to bring a quantum entanglement at the level of our cells so that cells can restore the flow of information, the correct flow of information Everything boils down to the theory of information. Life is information, but of course, when information is corrupted, all types of disease and aging may occur. So if we are able to restore the flow of information at the most basic level, that is the quantum level, if we are able to dilate the time, so time runs slower for cells or for certain regions of DNA, then genes have time to repair and so on. So these are, the two main basic concepts I will bring to the RAD Festival, uh, trying to bridge the gap between quantum physics and theory of relativity that seems to be far away from the, the daily concerns of aging or fighting diseases to quantum biology and quantum medicine. And we think we are on the right track. We have experimental evidence and all these will be part of my participation at the RAD Fest. And again, I thank for this wonderful opportunity. Well, beautiful. It sounds uh, very, uh, to say the least, uh, astounding uh, work uh, that you're doing and uh, very exciting to all of us who are interested in uh, age reversal and uh, living infinite lifespans, uh, I'm, which I'm sure you're, you're really a, a, a very strong advocate of. Uh, and, and so you, are you saying now that you actually have a, a, a therapy that you probably look like you're going to introduce at RADFEST that, uh, that will actually uh, have the potential to reverse aging? Well, uh, first of all, I would not use the word the therapy because okay. therapy implies a disease and aging okay. is not a disease. Nevertheless, aging is something that can be modified, can be accelerated and we don't want this to happen. Unfortunately, we see this happening in a number of conditions, but we can also slow down aging up to the point to stop aging and even reverse aging. Right. But then uh, relatively recently, it was discovered that some mammals that are evolutionarily very close to us, very related to humans, they can live the equivalent of six, seven, eight hundred years, mm -hmm. the human equivalent of six, seven, eight hundred years. And so researchers, um, actually even from the country of my country of origin, from Italy, from Germany, and from Ethiopia, because some of these mammals, they live in Northern Africa, uh, they studied these mammals and uh, they were looking for uh, whatever was in their genes because they thought, oh, these uh, animals are so longeve. I mean, they live 10 times as much as uh, a similar rodents. So maybe they have some genes that are responsible for this uh, 
longevity and mm. they couldn't find any difference. I mean, their genes were the same as the common mice and rats uh, that you can see around. Uh, so where was the difference? And the difference uh, they found out uh, was in the microbiota, that is the microbes uh, that constituted the major part of our cells. We know by now that the microbiome or microbiota is an essential organ of our cells. So essentially these rodents that live uh, 10 times as long as the other rodents. So if they were humans, we could say they live 700 years instead of 70. Now these rodents, they have the same DNA as the other rodents, but what is different is the microbial composition of their microbiota in the gut, in the skin, in the brain. I see. And very interestingly, the same microbial composition was found in ultra centenarians. Uh, people, humans who live more than 100 years, have a very, very similar microbial composition as these uh, long-lived rats. And also, it was very similar to certain uh, people who live in the Amazon forest or in other, let's say, virgin, uncontaminated places, uh, and their microbial composition was similar. So from that derived our approach. Our approach was to reconstitute uh, this microbial composition. And from there, we moved into the realm of quantum physics and theory of relativity, because we found out that these microbes not only reconstitute our good gut microbiome, you know, like good probiotics are known to do, they do much, much more. They use some small natural molecules that I don't want to become too boring and to enter into many biochemical details, but let's make it simple. Uh, these microbes that you find in ultracentenarians, in uh, people who live the most natural life, and in these long-lived uh, rats, well, these microbes, uh, they uh, transform common uh, molecules that you find uh, normally in nature into something extremely interesting because it uh, dilates time they, the molecules, they dilate times, and these molecules, they re-establish the flow of information at the quantum level. So we were able to bridge the gap between longevity, microbes, quantum physics, and theory of relativity. And this ends up with some very feasible approach. So you don't need to travel at the speed of light, or you don't need to go down to the center of a hertz. Uh, obeying to the theory of relativity, you can do this uh, uh, sitting uh, at your desk and simply modifying a few things. But of course, I don't want to spoil the surprise, so I will not tell you <laughs> what it is <laughs> right great. now. That's great. Wow, yeah, okay. Uh, extraordinary. So how long have you actually been working on this project? Well, on this particular project uh, since uh, 2011. I see. Uh, but uh, on a broader picture that encompasses this project, uh, since when I started working in research, when I was a young postdoctoral fellow in 1982, uh, well, 1983, as soon as I left the army, uh, in those days it was compulsory to be in the army, and I learned uh, quite a lot of things over there about radioactivity and aging and these things. Uh, now, this uh, research was prompted by studying some peculiar diseases uh, like a chronic fatigue syndrome or persistent or chronic Lyme disease, but also chronic infection like HIV infection. Uh, some of these diseases are associated with accelerated aging. And uh, since accelerating aging in itself is not a positive effect, and then we began studying how can we uh, deal with this accelerated engagement. And uh, like all other scientists, uh, we were fooled to think uh, that the answer was in the DNA, that the answer was in the genes. So somebody was born with genes that uh, gave him longevity, other people were born with genes that uh, gave uh, accelerated aging. And so we went after genes uh, for years, so I would say for decades. And we were wrong. Uh, yeah. Genes are more or less the same. What is different is how these genes work. In other words, uh, genes are just like instruction manuals. And information is there. Information most likely is the same for everybody or very similar. What is different is how do we interpret 
How do we read? How do we put to use or to work these genes, this information? So uh, nowadays, in the days of internet, all information of the world is over there, publicly available. But then it's up to you whether you're able to read it, to understand it, to use it, to implement it, and maybe you become a billionaire or maybe uh, you lose all your money, even though the information is the same and it is there. It's up to you. So at that point, uh, uh, we asked for help. And the help came from our friendly microbes. And the microbes are those who enable us uh, to read, interpret, and uh, rebuild or restore the information that is somehow corrupted by chlorinated waters uh, or by radioactive contamination or all types of toxicants that unfortunately are associated with the modern uh, life or modern way of living. So that's more or less how we came to this uh, rather innovative and novel approach to aging. And uh, not only aging, but also many chronic conditions can be targeted with this approach. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. So if I hear you right, then you're saying that people aren't necessarily uh, limited by their gene, by their genes, that uh, because some, like you said, some people, uh, it was presupposed that because of their genes, they would live longer or they would live a shorter time. But you're saying that these, uh, this microbiome can be uh, triggered in some way or, tr or, or, or uh, treated in some way that can actually activate uh, long, uh, longevity or, or uh, age reversal expression in the body? That's exactly what I'm saying. By the way, it's not me who is uh, saying this, uh -huh. but uh, there is a general consensus nowadays uh, that uh, uh, the genes are important, of course, uh, no doubt about this, but uh, genes are only a small part of what we are. Yes. Uh, maybe most important is how we read those genes. Uh, think of genes as instructions. Uh, how we read them, how we uh, interpret them. And by the way, talking about genes, uh, we perfectly know nowadays that the humans are made by about 22,000 genes. So that's the number of genes we have, you and I being humans. But if we count the genes of our microbes that in this very moment are in our guts, in our skins, uh, in our brains, everywhere in our bodies, then we end up with a figure that nobody knows for certain, but it is around 8 million. So, 8 million microbial genes working in this very moment in you and me, and only 22, 27,000 uh, human genes. So, you can easily understand the disproportion. I see. Yes. So, and those microbial genes, uh, they perform their target they perform their roles and the roles of course is the survival of the microbes first of all but since the microbes they live with us within us and they help us as long as they are friendly microbes not if they are pathogenic microbes so we see this interaction between microbial genes and human genes and there is a huge disproportion between the number of microbial genes and the number of human genes and now we know that we cannot change our genes. All uh, attempts to genetic therapy, that is to fix our human genes, uh, more or less have failed. But by simply drinking something, by simply eating something, or not eating something, not eating, uh, drinking something else, we can deeply modify the genome, that is the genes of our microbes. And so we can deeply affect the functioning of our body. That's beautiful. So then as individuals, we can more than, we're more in charge, we can more than, uh, as you say, modify uh, the responses in, in our bodies uh, and don't have to be so subject to, say, in a sense, what we have inherited, but we're, we can change today what we are by getting in touch with this, uh, with our uh, whole bio system. Is that, is that correct? Absolutely. 100% correct. Yeah. And uh, this uh, gives us a, a much, much greater uh, degree of freedom than we had uh, thought in the previous decades when we thought that everything was written in the genes. And since uh, the genes cannot be modified uh, the way you're born, the way you were supposed to die. Uh, now we know it's absolutely not the case and we can change. Uh, we, let's say we have regained our free will. So now we have the free will 
to change our genes. And when I say our genes, I do not refer to the human genes that stay there, they're fixed, but the microbial genes. But again, if you can change 8 million of genes, what uh, 22,000 count? I mean, they count very little. So that's exactly where we are at the verge of a revolution, a cultural revolution. It has already occurred in the uh, field of uh, basic science, but it is not known to most people. And that's where uh, the importance of events like the one we are talking about uh, comes to play because the majority of people doesn't know these things because uh, you know, they are known within a limited circle of scientists, but they are not known to the majority of people. That, that's, that's phenomenal, that's phenomenal. So you're gonna then bring to us to RADFEST, and that's the surprise you have, is how to actually uh, affect this, uh, to have that effect upon the body as a whole uh, that can begin to uh, bring about the changes we're already looking for from, uh, from age reversal to stronger immune systems to you name it, is that correct? That's absolutely correct. Yeah. And let me anticipate that this is a completely natural approach. Uh, because even though I've been working for the so-called big pharma, and I know that in many cases, uh, uh, drugs uh, are essential, are life-saving. Nevertheless, if we want uh, to uh, fight uh, natural processes like aging or accelerated aging, we cannot resort to drugs. I mean, we need something that is as natural as the microbes that we find in ultracentenarians or in these long-lived rats or in the Hasda uh, gather hunter. I mean, these people who live in the virgin Amazonian forest. Well, beautiful, beautiful. I'm, I'm very excited to uh, hear more. And I know everyone who's listening to this uh, video will be uh, very uh, anticipating uh, getting to RADFEST and hearing this. And so thank you so much for doing this interview. Is there anything you'd like to add before we close? I prefer to leave you with these expectations and I hope I've been able to create this enthusiasm and I guarantee that uh, you will hear things, uh, you know, like the, the old Blade Runner used to say, things that uh, you humans have never heard before. Well, you will hear things that are quite novel, quite revolutionary, somehow difficult to understand, but I'll do my best to make them clear. Well, I think you've done a really good job today. Thank you very much. And again, we're excited to hear you at RADFEST and look forward to seeing you there. Thank very, you so much. Yeah, very good. Very good job. Thank you.